Today we're going to talk about blessings and sacrifices and, and I think that a better way for us to really get personal application is to talk about blessings and obedience because you cannot have blessing without obedience. Blessings means to be happy and obedience. When we walk in obedience to the Lord, that's when we can have the blessings of the Lord to its fullest. So today I want to talk about um, just some of the things that are on my heart in regards to walking in the blessings of the Lord as the Lord so wants us to live those kinds of blessed life. So join me today and open your heart to receive what God has for you as you continue through the book of 1 Kings with me. First Kings chapter 8 verses 54 through 66 When Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord, where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out toward heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice, saying, Praise be to the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him to walk in all his ways and to keep the commands, decrees, and regulations he gave our fathers. And may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. But your hearts must be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to the Lord, 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and all the Israelites dedicated the temple of the Lord. On that same day, the king consecrated the middle part of the courtyard in front of the temple of the Lord, and there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the fellowship offerings, because the bronze altar before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the fellowship offerings. So Solomon observed the festival at that time, and all Israel with him, a vast assembly, people from Lebo Hamath to the Wadi of Egypt. They celebrated it before the Lord our God for seven days and seven days more, fourteen days in all. On the following day, he sent the people away. They blessed the king and then went home, joyful and glad in heart for all the good things the Lord had done for his servant David and his people Israel. We see here in verse 54 of 1 Kings 8 that Solomon is finished. It says all of his prayers and supplications to the Lord and he rose from the altar of the Lord. And I thought it was interesting because he had been kneeling but at the beginning in verse 22 it says that he was standing with his hands outstretched to the Lord. And these are just postures of prayer. Um, I believe that, that having a posture sometimes indicates a heart attitude. And I believe this posture of standing with his hands represents full surrender to the Lord, which is our memory verse, which talks about that, that may our hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God. 
And then we see somewhere, probably in this prayer, Solomon must have maybe gotten on his knees because it, now it says that he stands. And I think that the knees, kneeling, we need to kneel before the Lord. I know that we're not um, doing it because we're trying to perform some religious duty. But I was really touched here and I actually took some time and just stopped and got on my knees before the Lord and began to pray and just uh, telling the Lord how much I appreciate his blessings. But I wanted to do it in, in just kneeling because I, I totally wanted to honor the Lord, that he is my king and he is the one that I'm surrendered to. Now we see here that he talks about blessings and he talks about these, these sacrifices, but first let's talk about his blessings. The blessings of God are blessings that are full. It says in Psalms, to bless the Lord and forget not his benefits. The benefits of the Lord are multiple. He's promised us peace. He's promised us joy. He's promised us health. And he's promised us um, you know, to be in relationship with him and to have unity. He's given us so much. And there's so much wealth in a relationship with the Lord. And that's why that we want to walk in obedience so that we can be blessed. Now, one of the things that I think that it's important about how Solomon approaches the Lord is that he recalls God's blessings. And I think that in order to be blessed, we have to remember God's blessings. And we have to recall them before the Lord. I like to read books that talk about stories of people being blessed and testimonies of people's lives walking in blessing. There's a great book called Brushko, and it's about a young boy that comes to Christ. His name is Bruce Olson, and it's his story of coming to Christ and the Lord telling him to go to South America and to be a missionary. And when I read this, it makes me recall the blessings of the Lord, how God took this young man that was not raised in a Christian church, he just had a passion for the Lord. And as he walked in obedience to the Lord, the Lord's blessings flowed. One of the other blessings we have in the word of God and that we can walk in is the blessing of tabernacling with God, which we see here. He, you know, Solomon is tabernacling. He's having these tent interactions with God. And that's really what tabernacling is. It's having relationship with. That we as believers... We are called to bless others by bringing them into relationship with Jesus Christ, by making a way for people to have a relationship with the Lord, by providing those tent encounters, those tabernacling experiences. And when God is with us, when we recognize that, and we walk in obedience to him, we experience these amazing, amazing overflowing of his blessings. Now I said there's two words that really struck me here, blessing and obedience. So Solomon offers these sacrifices to God. And I'll tell you what, it was not a small undertaking. That was a bloody day. This sacrifice that he did in obedience to the Lord, that the priests did these sacrifices, they were done specific, but they were messy. And these sacrifices, they were not pleasant. But it's a foretelling of the sacrifice that God was going to offer through his precious son, Jesus. And when they offered these sacrifices that day, there was blood everywhere. The, this animal sacrifice, this was a, a long, detailed experience. When you go to Israel and you stand on the Temple Mount and you see the areas that they offered sacrifices, it's expansive. Those gullies were filled and you see the stairs where the blood would run down and that, that this, this was a, 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 an unclean thing. But our sins are unclean. We are unclean people without the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. And that's what this demonstrated. As Solomon brought his blessings and he brought these benedictions, these sacrifices to the Lord, we see that this was part of his duties. And that's part of our duties, to come to the Lord and to receive the sacrifice of Jesus so that we can be cleansed from our sins. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. But we need to come and we need to receive his forgiveness. We need to confess our sins 
And we need to confess our faults to the Lord and ask Him for His help. When we walk in obedience, we will be blessed. When we walk in obedience, we will have peace. When we walk in obedience, we will have joy. We will have healthy relationships with our family. We will have prosperous and blessed ministries. Will we go without problems? No. We will. Life is filled with problems. In fact, the Lord allows certain things to come our way, challenges so that we can become stronger. But we can be assured when we walk in obedience, we can receive his help and his blessing, his peace and his joy in the process. As we close in prayer today, could we just take a few moments to thank the Lord for his benefits? Would you join me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the cross. We thank you for your dear son Jesus and his obedience to go to the cross. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. We thank you that you are our great physician. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that you never change, that you are always the same. We can always depend on your unconditional love and acceptance. We can always stand on your promises, that all the promises in Christ are yes and amen. So Lord, we thank you for our benefits. And we pray that you would help us to walk in obedience so that others will see that godly living produces a blessed life. And this is the life a life well lived to bring you glory. In the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen.